In the past, I've talked about how much I enjoy drive enclosures, whether it's for hard drives, SSDs, NVMe drives, anything like that. And I really do like them. They have so many purposes, whether you're gonna be using it as a portable drive, whether you're gonna be using it for backups, whether you wanna just expand the amount of storage that you have available at your laptop, for example. Enclosures are a super helpful tool. And today we're gonna be covering the TBU405 from Acasis, which is a Thunderbolt specific enclosure. Now, what I have here is the TBU405 Air, and this one is specifically a Thunderbolt 3, 4, and 5 in USB 4.0 enclosure. If you want to be using it with something like USB 3.2, 3.1, 3.0, or 2.0, you'll have to use the standard TBU405 for that. The TBU405 Air is a entirely built out of aluminum to allow for that passive heat dissipation. It has up to eight terabytes of capacity, and as mentioned, only compatible with Thunderbolt 3, 4, 5, and USB 4.0, and therefore it comes with a 1.64 foot Thunderbolt 4.0 data cable. And what we'll see once we go ahead and do the unboxing and get our drive installed is that it's entirely tool free, which I find extremely handy, especially if you're gonna be using these enclosures to swap drives in and out all the time to do different things with them. Having something tool free just makes everything so much easier, especially when you're on the go. Now the TBU405 Air was sent over to me by Acasis. I was actually kind of excited to check this one out because I've only had one other Thunderbolt compatible enclosure and I wanted something to be able to compare it to. And now we can do that with this TBU405 Air. All right, we've got the box here. We've got a mix of English and Chinese here, but we have the TBU405 Air. We have quite a bit of Chinese on here, not, not a lot of English, but on the back, it mentions the 40 gigabyte SSD enclosure and the model number that we saw on the front. It weighs 95 grams, made of aluminum. It's 100 by 54 by 14 millimeters and it supports Windows, Mac, and Linux. Go ahead and slide this open. It's got a sleeve. We just go ahead and open this up. And there we go. It's a really nice small enclosure. Like the pictures make it look quite a bit bigger than it actually is. But there we go. It's in a Casus's typical color, which is like this kind of cool blue grayish color. So it looks pretty nice here. We have a little open icon. We have the 40 gigabit per second USB-C Thunderbolt. And then, yeah. So I believe we just open it like that. It's all done by magnets. So it's entirely toolless, which is really nice to see. And to get it closed again, we line up those dimples. And then we also make sure we put the back end first because it has a little slot there. So we just go ahead and slide that in like so and close it up and it closes really easily. But overall, the design is quite nice, very simple. So we've got a few more things in the box. We have our cable, which is a Thunderbolt to Thunderbolt USB-C to USB-C. And then we have some spare. So we have two pieces here. So one is the one that we'll use, and then the second one is a spare, which is nice to have. Then we have two thermal pads, or th a couple of thermal pads. It seems like they're all different thicknesses. And then... We have, oh, this is an adapter for if you have different length NVMe drives, this allows you to put them in properly. So that's cool as well. And then we've got our manual that mentions the maximum capacity. Again, a lot of those specs that we saw on the backside, how to get everything installed and how to eject it. So relatively straightforward. So because we're using a full length SSD, we don't need to use this adapter. So we can put that away. We have a bunch of different thicknesses for thermal pads. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna get the drive in there first, slot it in like so, and then it goes like this. And then we push this down until it clicks in. And we don't have a ton of space, so I think I'm just gonna use the thinnest thermal pad, which I believe is one millimeter, it says on here. Oh, so there's a one mil and there's a 0.5. I think we'll have to go with the 0.5, which is much thinner. So we'll go ahead, peel that off on one side. Get that lined up on there. Not very straight, Dimitri. There we go. Tore it a little bit, but we got it on here. And then we're just gonna go ahead, 
socket it in there like so. Close her up and let's get it plugged in. All right, so we have the cases plugged into a Thunderbolt 4 port on my laptop here. Now, a reminder, this enclosure is only compatible with Thunderbolt 3, 4, and 5 in USB 4.0. It will not work with USB 3.0, so do keep that in mind. We're gonna go ahead and run this on Crystal Mark with HW Info right beside it so we can keep an eye on temperatures. And we're gonna see how hot this gets. We're gonna go ahead and see the speeds that it's getting, and then we're gonna compare it to the Yoda Master Thunderbolt enclosure that I have and see how it compares to each other. All right, so our results are in. It did get a little bit toasty at 68 degrees Celsius, but I would consider 70 to be that top limit. And it's staying under 70 with a passive cooled enclosure is pretty good. Um, Overall, speeds look pretty decent as well. Let me go ahead and transfer this NVMe over to the Yoda Master. We'll get it plugged in the exact same way and we'll see how it performs. So now we've got the Yoda Master. Remember that this is an actively cooled enclosure. So we're gonna see how the temperatures compare to one another as well as those read and write speeds. Now, surprisingly enough, the Yoda Master got even hotter at 77 degrees Celsius, but it did seem to do quite a bit faster in terms of almost every single spec here, except for the second sequential. Everything else is higher than the Acasis was, so maybe that additional speed helped ramp up the temperature a lot, but the seven degree increase in temperature is quite a bit for a relatively overall minimum difference in terms of speeds. So I think that the temperature differences is probably caused by the fact that the Yoda Master, even though it does have that fan built into it, the actual NVMe itself, the only contact it has with any kind of heat dissipation material is the small little aluminum heat spreader that gets kind of pushed onto it with the thermal pads. Whereas with the Acasis enclosure, the whole case is built out of aluminum and your NVMe is directly coming into contact with that and then is able to use the entire enclosure to help dissipate heat. So that may be helping on top of the fact, like I mentioned, where maybe those increased speeds that the Yoda Master is seeing is also contributing to that increased heat. So it's something to keep in mind, but those results are pretty interesting overall. So now let's go ahead and talk about the price. And I think that's where the TBU 405 Air does a really good job. Directly from the Acasis website, currently it is on sale down from $100 to $61.90, but you can also get an additional 14% off using this code BTS14, and it brings that down to $53.24, which I think is a great price. It's cheaper than what it is on Amazon. And then the other model, the TBU405, which is still compatible with, with all of the versions of USB, no matter what, that one is normally 140, it's down to about $82. And then again, you have another 14% off with that coupon as well. And the pro version is normally 170, down to about $97. And then again, 14% off with the BTS 14. On August 15th, Acasis also started their back to school promotion, which means that when an order reaches $69, nice, customers can receive a free Acasis notebook. When the order reaches $169, Customers receive a free Acasis backpack, and when an order reaches $269, customers can receive a free Acasis docking station. The TBU405 Air is normally around $60 on Amazon, currently down to $57 with a slight discount. It is the least expensive TBU405 model because it is only compatible with Thunderbolt 345 and USB 4.0. If you want to get the model that supports USB 3.0, 3.2, 3.1, all of those, it is going to be a little bit more expensive at $80, but I still think that is a really good price. They do also have a fan. They do also have a model with an active fan built into it for $96, which with a coupon is currently down to $86. So that's a great price. I still think that is a really good price for that as well, considering it has the active fan. I don't have it to test it though. And then they have 
a top end version, which allows for two NVMe drives in it and the active fans. And that one is $200 and goes down to $180 on sale with an additional $30 coupon. But at this price point, I think it's very competitive. I think all of the models are relatively competitive, especially compared to other brands like Yoda Master, like Oracle, like Ugreen. This is a really good price and it is something that is easily recommendable, especially this specific model, the TBU 405 Air, if you have a Thunderbolt 4 compatible device, like all of the recent Mac products, as well as a laptop that utilizes Thunderbolt 4, like a lot of the Dell and HP work models that exist. And that kind of goes for uses. If those are the kinds of laptops and products that work really well with this because of Thunderbolt. <clears throat> and that kind of leads to where this becomes most useful because if most of the products that this is most useful for is laptops, as well as the Mac mini, I really think that this is great as an expansion storage. I think it's great as a portable drive. For example, if I was using MacBooks to do my editing and maybe a Mac mini while at my desk, this would be a really great editing drive where I can put all of my files and stuff on here that I wanna edit with. I can start editing maybe on my Mac mini and then if I was traveling elsewhere but I still wanted to edit on maybe my MacBook, I could take all those files on this drive, bring it with me, I know that they'll perform well, I know the drive will stay cool enough where I won't have to worry about degradation or anything like that. And I think that's probably the best use case for this kind of enclosure. And with all that said, I really would recommend this if you have one of those Thunderbolt compatible devices. I think that the value proposition is great. It's priced really well. It's built extremely well. The thermal performance was great. The speed performance was really good, even though it did lose to the Master in some of those areas. I don't think they were overly significant. And I just think that overall, this performed really, really well at the sub $60 price point. And I would recommend it, especially to people who use the Mac ecosystem. But I am curious what you guys think about this. So leave comments how about how you think about this down in the comments. I'm sure cases will be reading these as well. And with all that said, I really do hope you found this video helpful. And if not, I at least hope you found it interesting. If you did, I'd really appreciate it. If you like, subscribe, if you have any questions, comments, or feedback, you can leave those all down in the comment section below and I'll get to them all as quickly as I can. Big thanks to my patron sponsors and big thanks to you for watching to the end of this video. If you do wanna see any other videos relating to product reviews, you can go ahead and check out the playlist right up here. And as always, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.